Hello, my name is Jim Perkins. I'm on the Network Operations Management Suite team at MicroFocus. Welcome. In this video, I will be walking through a demonstration of how the MicroFocus Network Operations Management Suite can detect, identify, and remediate a network traffic issue. Let's get started. Before we dig into the software, let's set the stage. We received information via a trouble ticket that there was a problem on the network that was negatively impacting the performance of a hosted application working in the Cambridge office. This was first observed two days ago. After a follow-up call on the ticket, I was notified that everything is working fine now, but to, it was not two days ago. That can be frustrating, but I'm not concerned. I can still find the issue, even if it was only happening in the past. The administration team for the application has completed their investigation of the issue, and they have made a compelling argument to me that there is something wrong with the network that I need to investigate further. So, let's jump into NOM and NNMI and begin our investigation. We will go to the menu and into our node group map for the Cambridge office. This is a custom topology map for our Cambridge office, which gives a network topology relationship view specific to the branch office. From our ticket, we know that there was a poor response time in using an application in the Cambridge office from an application hosted in the Oxford Data Center. The device where the issue was observed is BSM910SH, which is visible here. The application is hosted on OBA App 1. The devices themselves appear to be green and normal. Something that would be helpful here would be a layer 3 path view of the network between these two devices. We can do that by selecting the two devices in question. Open the Actions menu. Select Maps and Path View. Now we see the Layer 3 network from end to end. This is essentially a graphical representation of a trace route. Immediately, we notice that the Cambridge router is not green, but yellow. I want to investigate this, so I select it. In the context of the node, we see that there is a threshold violation on the interfaces of this router. This is a clue to help us on our troubleshooting journey. Let's get more information on this error. For that, I turn to the node level dashboard. Now we have a new tab. These tabs across the top kind of act as breadcrumbs to help us find our way back to where we came from. And I want to expand all my data out here four days because this, is, this happened two days ago. We notice that the first interface is showing a high level of traffic volume, so let's dig in a little further. Now we have gone from a node dashboard to the interface dashboard. We notice under top applications, there's some interesting data there, so let's kind of scroll around here and see what we can find. Oh, what is this? It looks as if BitTorrent traffic is running through this router. Well, let's click on it and open the application dashboard. This is the application dashboard specific to BitTorrent. Here we can see that the source of the BitTorrent application is Oxford Lin 1. And looking at the top destinations, we note that Cambridge Lin 1 is the primary destination. This tells us that the offending BitTorrent traffic is primarily between these two nodes. Well, I'm not pretty confident I found a significant clue. Next, I'd like to take a step backward and see how these two nodes are connected to each other on the network and how they may be impacting the performance of the Oxford router. To do that, I only need to click on the Cambridge Lin 1 to open the node dashboard. From this dashboard, let's see if we can figure out how the BitTorrent running on this node is impacting the performance of the Oxford router. Now this is an interesting data point. It appears that this interface was 67% unavailable during the time of the reported issue for the business application. This is consistent with what was reported in the ticket. Let's look into this interface and how it was connected to the network. The Oxford switch is connected to this offending node. By hovering over the interface, we now know the switch port they are connected on. The switch is green, so it appears to be operating normally now, but I'm very curious to know how it connects to the impacted router. 
It is impossible to know that with only a single hop. I would like to see more of what is connected to the switch, so let's jump over to a topology map with more neighbors. Okay, but now I want more hops. That looks like a good number of hops. Let me zoom in to the device in question. Now we can see how this is impacting the network. It is very likely that the BitTorrent on Oxford LIN1 and its heavy communication with Cambridge LIN1 is impacting the performance of our online banking application hosted in Cambridge. We should have ACLs in place to block BitTorrent traffic through the Oxford switch. My instinct tells me that a configuration change has been made and that change may have allowed this traffic. Therefore, I want to look at the incident list for this node. Now we see the incidents and the first incident gets my attention. Let's open an all incidents view to get more specifics. I want to create a filter based on the Oxford switch. Just as I suspected, I see there is a configuration change made on this switch. This change is followed by an event noting that the switch is out of policy compliance for blocking BitTorrent. We can now be confident that we have found the root cause that allowed this BitTorrent traffic to pass through the switch. We will now begin the process of reversing this change to prevent this from happening in the future. We will start by determining what this change entailed. By simply clicking on the incident, I will open the incident form where I can open the node form. From this form, I can easily cross-launch over to network automation and view the differences in configuration as the latest configuration change. That was easy. I'm now exactly where I want to be, and the differences between the current and previous configurations are easily visible. One of the changes that was made was to open up port 6881 which is the default port used for BitTorrent. You may notice the box at the top notifying us the node is out of compliance. There is a link which allows us to go straight to our list of policy activities. Here is when the policy check ran that caused the out of compliance event. By opening it, I see that this policy is specifically looking for the text containing the configuration that would block BitTorrent traffic. Well, that was informative, but now I want to remediate this problem and close the ticket. Let's open the page for the switch by clicking on this link. And from there, we can quickly provision a script to close that port. We already have a command script defined for this purpose. So I open that, and then I can select the variables. Save it, and it runs. The change was successful. Let's go back to Network Node Manager and see if everything is back to normal. We'll open our topology map again. And from here, I can select the router and pull it for status. Refresh the topology. Fantastic, the router is now green. The BitTorrent port has been closed, and now I can close the ticket. Having found the root cause, remediated the issue, and returned the status of the router to normal. And with that, we conclude our demonstration.